Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Jefferson, and I'm a Scala developer from Colombia. Uh, and today I'm here to talk about um, a little exploration on the Scala tooling ecosystem. Um, I think this is an important topic since the developer experience is greatly affected by the tooling supporting and surrounding a certain language. And that can also impact uh, the, the adoption of, of such language. So what are tools used for? Uh, basically, we, on a daily basis, we use tools for different things, like editing our code, compiling, and testing our workflows. But there's a more task that we need to do uh, for uh, get our code <coughs> uh, being published uh, or for benchmarking, even we need tools for creating another tools on that. Uh, we also we have to use tools to dependency management, uh, publishing our artifacts, um, versioning them, and among another tasks. So why do we care about tooling? Uh, do you have any guesses on that? Well, I think we care on tooling for we need to improve our productivity. So the tooling can speed up our productivity by minimizing the, the required time to, to see uh, whatever result that we are expecting. This result can be the compiled code, uh, the binary is being published, uh, syntax errors, compiling errors. <coughs> um, also, we need that these tools uh, can be like lightweight tools and easy to integrate to our particular ex technology stack. And we want these tools to be uh, to embrace our particular workflows and not to be forces to to adapt to their particular vision instead. So. Uh, the tools can uh, most to make the developer feedback cycle as short as, short as possible, because when our build tool or an, an, our editor or ID is, is slow to respond, our productivity drops. This is how those likes the metals uh, diagnosis feedback over VS Code. <coughs> uh, this is important because uh, this tool is focusing on the new efforts on the Scala community around tooling, uh, which is in particular the adoption of the language service protocol and the build server protocol. <coughs> uh, LSP was published in 2016 by Microsoft. And for the Visual Studio Code. And so then um, this protocol gets a significant tra traction, but it now has implementation for more than 20 different programming languages. And most of the major editors that are in the market. And the language service protocol defines uh, a common way to to communication between an editor and the language service, which uh, this service can provide uh, features for our oh, sorry, uh, I like features like uh, code complete uh, or go to definition or find different re uh, references on our code uh, and surrounding the project. So the the basic idea of this protocol is to standardize the way and how these servers and can communicate con with the development tools. Uh, <coughs> this language service uh, can run as a separate process from the, uh, this, the particular development tool that you are using. 
And this can communicate uh, with that tool over JSON RPCs, which is an asynchronous and cancelable communication. Uh, also, this client, which in our case is will be into uh, our particular editor choice or, or our, our ID, uh, can notify the, the server about the different actions that the user is, is, is doing. And the server can maintain also a representation on our code and notifies the editor about things like the errors or warnings that the language can detect. In this way, uh, the same language service can be used to different uh, development tools on the uh, in this uh, client server architecture. And so this server can be reused in, for different tools at the same time. Uh, we also improves the, the support to different languages with minimal effort by the tooling authors, making like the no need to, to put much to t is the labor is going to be easier since this communication is standardized. So in Scala we have now uh, very important efforts and implementations on this language servicer. Uh, the first one was an implementation for VS Code by Julian Dragos. Uh, then we have an implementation, another implementation on LSP. Uh, it's called Metals. I'm going to talk more about Metals in a moment. Uh, .e comes with a built-in support for language services over VS Code as well. Uh, right now, uh, they are using SBT for compilation and have uh, official support for that build tool. Uh, they have a, a limited set of supported features right now, uh, like type checking and show the compiler and errors as, as you type. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, also, they, they, they had uh, time information and documentation on, on Hover, and find the, all the references and uh, the version mode. For SBT servers, since uh, the version one of uh, uh, SBT, they are in using LSP in the version three, or JSON RPC as well. Uh, the, the idea for the SBT server is to have multiple clients, uh, which are cli uh, different editors or, or IDs, ca that can connect to a, a single SBT session. Um, the problem here is that Killing uh, our hub SBT session is really easy, uh, and very often we don't use uh, the same instance of SBT for uh, different tags. And finally, we have uh, Ensign, uh, who has an LSPIN implementation as well, based on the Dragos, Dragos BS code. And the idea behind Ensign is to add ID features over uh, text editors. Uh, now, we have uh, a decent amount of different IDs and editors supporting this initiative, in, in the Scala in particular. If you want to see more information about the adoption, you can visit these links. So, uh, as I say, uh, a little more about metals. Uh, Metals is, was based on the very beginning of this project on also on the Dragos VS Code uh, implementation for ESP. And it's a language service for Scala. And right now it's pretty much a uh, work in progress and has a different degree of, of features according to the uh, uh, editor, the editor that you choose to work with metals. Uh, their current goal is focusing on have great code navigation 
using SemanticeDB. Uh, so the goal is to, to achieve uh, in, in the first part of the project, a robust code browsing. Uh, I, this is how it looks like the go-to definition on metals over uh, VS Code. So right now, Metal has integration with uh, the major editors that are using in this community. The cool thing about the, this project is they want to to address the common compliance in, about IDs, which are indexing. And when you are starting a new project in, uh, at the build and the ID, that you are using is indexing your code. Uh, normally, this in this process gets in our gray from coding. And the other common complaint is the heavy use uh, of CPU and memory, uh, especially if we are, we are working with large code bases. This can take our, our results. And for a way to run in Slack, for instance, at the same time. Now, uh, semantic DB is a um, data schema for semantic information about our code. <coughs> uh, it can model uh, different uh, features about them. Uh, they are more relevant for uh, development tools, uh, so, such as uh, type signatures or resolve names in, in generated by a compiler plugin. Uh, this semantic information can be perceived and consumed uh, through protoboots, sequels, or, or JSON, as dependent on what you want to do with this information. Uh, processing this information does not require a running compiler, so you can uh, process this uh, semantic data in, in a very fast way. Uh, yeah, also offers you the a, a portable uh, semantic API for uh, to have a standard way to share information between different uh, tools. In the case of IntelliJ IDEA with the Scala plugin, they choose to know, to reimplement the compiler in internals instead of using uh, this kind of approach. The build server protocol. This protocol uh, is to, to create a common functionality between uh, the build tools and the language services. Uh, this functionality can enable a uh, better developer experience regarding tooling, since uh, the amount of work and time uh, surrounding these integrations with build, build tools can be uh, significantly reduced. Uh, for that, uh, this comes also with a built-in BSP integration. Uh, in the case of BSP, which is also uh, like an extension for RSP or the language server protocol, uh, the clients uh, will be the, the the language service itself and our editors or IDs or even another build tools. Uh, IntelliJ IDEA has already implemented the BSP protocol uh, on the nightly versions of the Scala plugin. Uh, now, Bloop. Uh, Bloop is an implementation of BSP, uh, in particular for Scala. Has now also uh, support for different build tools like uh, SBT, MIB, Gradle, and MIL, and support different IDs like IntelliJ I can also work uh, alongside with Metals over the editor uh, of your choice. Uh, the cool thing about Bloop is that they can speed up your compiling time. Uh, uh, Bloop uh, will keep and hook Incremental compiling process. So this 
hot compiler can be roughly like 20 times faster as a code compile. And it's not as easy to get code like in the case of this BT, even using an incremental compiler like sync. Uh, it's also like uh, compiler agnostic, so it can run on Scala 2 or even with Doty. And can also is easy to integrate with another build tools just doing some configuration process. Um, now I'm going to talk about uh, a few build tools that we had in, in the Scala community. Uh, uh, John already talked about Fury, so I have not seen really to add about that, but except that Google is a bit such a troll with this kind of names. Uh, now, CBT. CBT stands for Chris Build Tool. I think Chris is in here. Say hi, Chris. <laughs> okay. Uh, this build tool is, it stands for uh, be a quite simple build tool. Uh, it has a, really, a few new concepts. Um, the programs here are, uh, <coughs> are within, uh, the build programs are built using vanilla Scala. Uh, unlike SBT, CBT uh, maps the task, to ex the task execution to JVM methods. And it's possible actually to achieve reproducible builds using this tool. Uh, it also, this tool addresses uh, the common needs uh, for the Scala buildings right now, like compiling, running, your application, testing, publishing, to Sonatai, or uh, maybe, I think. Uh, it's a tool, cool, a cool tool, science is quite simple to, to understand. It, the, the source code is, is very easy to read, even for uh, Scala and e-commerce. And also has uh, duty support, which is still kind of experimental. Uh, for instance, they are no, does, doesn't have incremental compilation uh, supported yet. Another build tool that we can choose from is MIL. Uh, MIL is actually pretty fast. Uh, also, it takes a bunch of um, caching to, to avoid unnecessary work. And it's different, like we, it's based on heavy ideas from the functional programming. So for the people that is, get, is familiar right now with functional programming, the, that the base code is, is quite interesting. And it, it also that makes that for people that has a functional programming background can understand that tool easily and will be interested in using that. PANS is a source dependency build tool which aims for large code bases in a monorepo environment. Uh, this tool uh, supports fast and consistent uh, build, builds and it also support bootstrapping, uh, the code generation, and uh, two-party resolution, compilation, test running, and also has, has uh, 19 functionalities. Uh, then we have uh, Basil. Uh, Basil has is features to get uh, to reproducible builds. Uh, it wants to be fast and correct builds. Uh, so your builds, you can actually text your builds, and basically it's going to cache uh, the output of that testing process to, to achieve uh, the reproducibility. <coughs> so it's like in comparing to, to functional programming, we also we want to, to enforce the correctness of our programs. With this tool, you, you can do the same thing. Uh, in regards we we do build. Um, Basil uh, takes a heavy advantage of the, the caching process. 
for to achieve uh, search goals. And, and right now supports multiple languages uh, and can be uh, with extensible build, build systems. <coughs> so uh, as a summary for the major problems uh, surrounding uh, the tooling process, we, right now we have uh, very decent and elegant and simple solutions that can address such problems. Uh, for, for instance, for diagnosis, uh, is a, a great idea that you maybe want to try is like combining blood, even with IntelliJ or uh, metals on the particular editor that you are using right now for your projects. Project. And you can see after a few compilation cycles how fast is this uh, feedback that you get from these tools. And this also is, you actually feel how this can help you to improve your productivity day by day. Uh, these are additional links that I get all this information to. Uh, I, I will share this slide uh, later, and you, if you are interested in get more in uh, get more detail about all these these build tools or the tooling process itself, you can research on these links. So uh, I think we have time for questions. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Um, you, you mentioned that IntelliJ is now shipping with a, a BSP implementation. Yes. And uh, you mentioned Bloop. Is there, are there, is anybody else building any, any BSP implementations that you've found beyond the, the standard open source and then IntelliJ? Oh. Or, or, is the, or is this mostly an IntelliJ protocol? Or? Well, the very first uh, implementation of our BSP that I know is, and, and I'm aware of, is IntelliJ. I, I think what some efforts regarding the Scala ID, which is built uh, on Eclipse. But yeah, I, I can even find uh, another implementation that is currently working with, with that protocol. Any other questions? All right, thanks Jefferson. Thank you.